everybody. Um, thank you for participating in our uh, webinar today. I'm going to be talking a little bit about a variety of topics, but primarily focused on planning and development. My name is Anya Howard, and I'm the manager of planning and development for Camaros County. I've worked there for about 15 years, so I'm going to bring as much information as I can about both my role as the manager of planning and development and also the other departments within the organization that just didn't have an opportunity to present today. Uh, we're going to be covering a variety of topics, as I said. We're going to focus on planning and development to start, and then some other things that might be interesting to anybody who's moving out to the county or considering moving out to the county, including rural addressing, economic development, assessment, um, the role of our peace officers and emergency management, as well as some other smaller topics as, as we go forward. So the first thing you should think about when you're moving out to the county is, what is my acreage going to look like? So whether you've bought an acreage that already has an existing house on it, or you're thinking that you're going to buy a bare land acreage and build your own house on it, there's certain things that you should think about when you're designing the layout of your lot. And the biggest one that's a difference from being in an urban environment is natural drainage that will occur on your acreage. We don't have a lot of fixed drainage uh, districts in our, in our community, so you're going to end up having to look at your property and determine where the natural drainage is so that you can avoid developing in low areas or any area that might be uh, susceptible to flooding. So when you're building a house or an accessory building or anything like that, the first thing that you should be doing is looking for anything that might indicate that the ground is low, such as uh, pooling water, obviously, or a change in vegetation. You should avoid uh, developing in those areas and seek higher grounds. The other thing to consider when you're developing your yard site is wind. Uh, wind generally comes from the northwest, so you want to ensure that when you're designing your yard, whether it's for a fire pit or again for a building, that you're trying to protect yourself from that northwest wind. That will help you enjoy your yard a little bit more. Um, it will also affect how snow falls in your yard. So if you uh, don't design your yard properly, you may end up shoveling more. So those are things to factor in when you're looking at that development. If you're looking for more information on that particular topic, obviously, I would recommend that you Google the uh, acreage of design. There's lots of tips out there on the internet for what to look for and how to plant trees and those kinds of things to ensure that you have the nicest yard site possible. So now that you've decided that you're going to develop something in the county, the next question is, do I need a permit? And there are things that you will need a permit for in Camrose County when you go to develop it, and there are things that you won't. The things that you don't typically need a permit for are smaller projects, like a standard fence if that's not over six feet high, an accessory building that's under 10 meters squared or 107 square feet, a pole for your flag that's under 20 feet you don't need a permit for, solar energy that's attached to your house you don't need a permit for. So there's a lot of renovations that you can do um, on your property without needing a permit. That includes things like a minor basement renovation or reconfiguring your kitchen or anything like that. The other thing that uh, often doesn't need a permit is decks. If your deck is less than two feet off the ground, you don't need a permit for it. If it's over two feet off the ground, then you actually do because the Alberta Building Code requires it because you would then need railings. So that's the difference. Decks under two feet don't need a permit because you don't have to build railings. Permits are required if you're building a house, obviously, or a garage. Major renovations, which typically include adding bathrooms or bedrooms. If you're running a home-based business, you'll need a development permit, accessory buildings over 10 square meters, and any freestanding solar energy uh, projects that are over 10 square meters will require a development permit. Again, uh, with development permit information, the best thing to do is to go to our website, which is www.county.cameras.ab.ca, or just Google Cameras County. There's a lot of information on development uh, and any other topic there. I find that often people are thinking about development permits after hours or on the weekend. So this is a great resource to get your project started without having to wait for the office to be open. We're certainly willing to take your calls at any time, but this is a great resource. Talks about all of the things I just talked about, about when you need a permit and um, how best to build and those kinds of things. Once you have a development permit, the other permits that you'll be required, and it's the same as you would in the city of Camrose or any other city that you're moving from, you'll need safety co codes permits from the province. 
So those actually get issued in Camrose County by the city of Camrose. We contract them to do those permits for us. Safety codes permits include building, plumbing, electrical, gas, and rural sewage permits. So anytime you're doing a building that would require any of those uh, structures or uh, units to be constructed, you would need to obtain a permit from them. Again, their website's excellent. You can reach them at www.camrose.ca. Another interesting topic that a lot of people as they're moving out to an acreage uh, discover that they don't know enough about is private sewage systems. The majority of our acreages in Camrose County are on a private sewage system. So one of the things that you want to factor in when you're buying a house or building a house is private sewage. There is an excellent workshop by the Land Stewardship Centre called the Septic Stents Workshop that gives you a lot of detail on your private sewage system. But I'm going to touch on a few highlights because it is a question that we receive at the county quite regularly. The importance of maintaining your private sewage system cannot be stressed enough. It's how you treat your system is how it will treat you. And if you don't treat it right, it's much like a car or a furnace. If you're not doing regular maintenance on your private sewage system, it's going to fail, it's going to cause you problems, and it's going to cost you money. So the best thing that you can do is make sure that you're doing regular maintenance on your private sewage system and that you're treating it well so that it will last a long, long time. So if you're in looking at installing a new system, the best thing that you can do is hire a professional to help you out. Private sewage systems are very complex these days. It's not like the old system where you could just dug a trench out into the farmer's field and just left the sewage there. Most of the time on an acreage, you're going to be looking at a more advanced system like a field system or a mound. And you need to have the right expertise to know what size of system that you're going to need because the system is based on the size of your house, the number of fixtures, those kinds of things, and also the type of soil that is in the area. Um, most of the treatment that comes out of a private sewage system is actually treatment by the soil itself. So you have your septic tank that kind of does a little bit of preliminary treatment and then it's the soil that is going to do the remainder of it. So you want to make sure that you have the right size system in the right soil to function properly. Um, do not expand the size of your residence without expecting that you might need to upgrade your sewer system. Any expansion is likely going to cause you to need to increase your sewage system. And same if you change the types of uses in that building. So if you add a business that might create a lot more water, like a daycare or something like that, you're definitely going to see a need to increase that system size. Within your home, it's really important to have a discussion with every member of your family about the proper way to maintain your sewer system from just what you put into your sink and toilet. So gone are the days that you can compo or that you can garborate things into your sink and go into the system. What you want to make sure is that you are reducing all food scraps as much as possible in your sink. So don't garborate things, don't put scraps into the sink to wash down. Those should all go into the garbage. In addition, you want to see if you can use water saving devices as much as possible, low flow toilets and faucets and those kinds of things. Um, definitely be you know, mindful of leaks and fix them as quickly as, proper, as possible uh, to try and reduce the amount of water that is going into your septic system. Other things uh, to keep in mind are things that you absolutely, again, should not be putting in your system, and this would apply in an urban setting as well, but it's a good reminder that these things do not decompose properly and can clog up your private sewage system. So don't put cigarette butts, paper towels, sanitary tampons, condoms, disposable diapers, plastics of any kind, or any non-biodegradable materials in there. Again, avoid washing food scraps, coffee grounds, kitty litter, uh, oil, paint thinners, anything like that that is, should not go down the toilet. Make sure you're not flushing any of those things. The only thing you should be flushing are bodily fluids and toilet paper. And another thing to keep in mind is flushable wipes. Although they flush, do not decompose in your private sewage system. So do not flush flushable wipes into your sewer system because it will clog up and it will cost you time and money down the road. Maintenance, um, again, like I said earlier, it's just like a car or a furnace. You need to be maintaining your system on a regular basis. You should have it inspected once a year. You should know the location of your septic tank, the 
location of the soils uh, treatment uh, facility. Um, you should have your tank pumped out regularly uh, to make sure that it's running uh, properly. Um, and make sure that you're having a professional do those things. One of the things you definitely do not want to do is ever enter into your septic tank. Septic tanks have gases in them that can uh, cause you to pass out very, very quickly. So you have to have confined spaces training in order to go into your septic tank. So make sure while you're doing your proper maintenance that you don't actually em enter into a septic tank. And within your yard, again, going back to the fact that the soil is treating your private sewage, you want to make sure that you know exactly where that is and that you're protecting the area that your private sewage discharges into. You want to make sure that you're not driving on it, that you're not parking on it, that you're not paving over it, that you're not planting trees into it. All of these things can cause your field to fail by compressing the soils or even the pipes that run the water to the field and cause that to fail. So you want to make sure that you know where your septic system is and that you're protecting it from any type of development. It should be a nice grassy area with no trees, no development and no parking. The important thing is to make sure that you're definitely ensuring that those areas are protected so that they don't get damaged. The other thing to consider is that you don't want to overwater them. You're already dumping water underground into that area, so you don't want to be watering that lawn at any time because you can saturate the soils, and if the soils are saturated, they can't treat your effluent. So now that you've learned a little bit about private sewage, uh, we do get other questions about how to service our acreages. The most common questions there relate to power and natural gas. We actually have a map on our website that shows who your natural gas and power providers are. Depending on the area of Cameras County that you're in, there's numerous different providers that service our areas. So you need to find your location on the map and then determine which provider you need to contact for power and natural gas. The other question that we get a lot, and it's certainly something that you probably want to look at before you move out onto an acreage, is your internet provider, especially important if you're planning on running a home business or working from home in any way. The county doesn't keep a list of internet service providers, but there is a website run by the province that tells you where or which internet providers service each area. So basically you just take your legal description, you type it into the internet service coverage search, and it will tell you all of the providers that can provide you internet. And then what we recommend is that you contact them and have them come out to your site and test your individual site to make sure that they can provide you at your specific location. They all broadly cover a large area, but sometimes if your property is low or surrounded by trees, it can affect the ability of those service providers to provide you with internet. So we recommend before you move out that you have that checked if it's an important feature for you. Rural addressing, uh, again this is part of development but also part of the uh, emergency management and safety of your property. It's very important just like you know your urban address that you know your rural address. A number of years ago, we didn't have rural addressing in Cameras County. You just went by your legal description. But now every property that has a house on it is assigned a rural addressing number. And it's important to make sure that you are aware of what that number is and that you have it near a phone so that if something happens, you can tell the emergency services when you call 911, this is where I am, because they will not be able to find you by your legal location nearly as quickly as they can by your rural address. This slide talks a little bit about how our rural addressing system works. It's similar to an urban center where your uh, street number is the township or range that you're on and then the numbers increase as you go to the west um, or to the north. But if you want more details on that, this slide is available on our website and you can find out. But if you don't know what your rural addressing is, please contact Cameras County. We do have an addressing expert who will provide you that information. And if you don't have a blue address sign, they will actually provide you a sign for a small fee. Again, with rural addressing, the important thing is not only that you know your number, but when the emergency services arrives or a package delivery arrives, they can know where you are too. So Cameras County has standardized our addressing, much like most counties do. You're required to have a blue sign at your approach that has your rural addressing sign number on it. If for some reason you don't have a blue addressing sign or it's been damaged in any way, again, please contact the county and we can get you a replacement that you can install to ensure that uh, fire or, or ambulance can always find you.
Another development that we often see on properties or requests for development is shelter belts. Lots of people obviously want to plant a number of trees on their property. We do have some restrictions on location of trees. So we recommend that you uh, follow, uh, follow those regulations. On a typical acreage, the rule is that your trees must be at least 10 meters from the property line closest to a road. So in this case, you would, when you're trying to determine where that is, you would look at the edge of the road, the ditch going down across, and as the ditch starts to rise up, that's generally about where your property line starts. And then you wanna be 10 meters or 33 feet back from that property line. The reason for that is because we wanna ensure that your trees are far enough back that when they grow, they're not growing into the right of way, which would then cause us to come and cut them. It also provides a little bit of distance as somebody's driving down the road. So if wildlife are in the trees, there's a bit more time to respond and react to the wildlife coming out of the trees. And it reduces the um, shadowing onto the, the roadway, which can cause icing in the winter. And it also can reduce the amount of snow drifting onto the roadway by pushing those trees back. The uh, road is less likely to drift over with snow. If you're on a very large acreage and you have some farmland adjacent to or included within your acreage, the rule for setbacks on uh, shelter belts actually increases to 30 meters. So in your yard site proper, you only have to be 10 meters from the road, but if you've got farmland, it, it then increases to 30 meters. Speaking uh, on economic development, Cameras County is very open to supporting economic development, especially home-based businesses and on-farm businesses. We work very hard with our producers to try and uh, make it as easy as possible to start a business in Cameras County. We definitely understand the advantage of having your business on your home property. It can save you overhead for having a business in town. It's also more convenient and certainly in a COVID world, lots of us are working from home, uh, whether that was our intent or not. Home-based businesses allow, in Cameras County, we allow non-resident business uh, uh, employees as well. So depending on where you are in Cameras County, you can have as few as one or two external employees or up to 19 before you become uh, beyond a home-based business. Usually the factor that we look at is, is your acreage isolated and it's just a single parcel surrounded by farmland? Then the number of employees you can have and the amount of business that you can generate on the farm before we say it's beyond a home-based business is fairly extensive. If you're in an uh, acreage on a multi-lot where you have lots of neighbors, then those numbers would reduce uh, with that uh, re uh, increase in neighbors just to ensure that your business isn't negatively impacting the neighbors. So that's our main factor when we're looking at whether a home business is appropriate in a community is will it have a negative impact on the neighbors? Is it going to create extra traffic or noise or dust or anything like that? If those issues can all be mitigated, then we pretty much support every home business in Camrose County. You will require a business permit for your home business or any other business in Cameras County. The advantage that we have is that uh, we require a business permit as a one-time permit, not as a business license that needs to be renewed every year. So once you have your permit, you can run your business as outlined in your permit uh, indefinitely without uh, requiring a business license, which saves a little bit of money in the long run um, because you're not paying the municipality every year to renew your permit. We are working very hard with our businesses and we've just recently started an economic development committee. If you have ideas for that committee, you certainly reach out to the planning department or the economic development department and we will uh, try and accommodate those. One of the success stories that we have for our businesses is our Food Artisans of Camaros County. It's a collective of about 60 different producers that grow, produce, or process food within Camaros County. The requirement to be a food artisan is that you have to be a resident or a business owner within Camaros County or the municipalities within Camaros County. And they really do target all the different types of food um, from honey and beer to vegetables and beef, you pretty much can get anything. If you are thinking on your farm that you want to produce something, we encourage you to become a member of the Food Artisans. If you're not thinking you want to grow something on your own or, or uh, produce something on your own, we encourage you to support your neighbors. 
There's information on the Food Artisans of Camrose County on our website. They also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. So there's lots of ways to connect with them and show that you are supporting your local producers and community, and also at the same time getting really fresh food that's healthy and natural. So if you have any questions about businesses in Camrose County, certainly reach out to the county, check out our website. We do have a business resource page on our website that has an excellent uh, details on a number of different programs that the county is offering and that other uh, nonprofits and levels of government are offering from grants to webinars and seminars. Um, there's some surveys there. There's also a survey if you have a business in Camrose County and you want some more information, sign up for the survey, which is basically to authorize us to send you a newsletter on a regular basis about what Camrose County is doing on economic development. Another question that we get asked a lot, because uh, if you've lived in the Cam Camrose County at any, or any municipality at any time, you're going to see people driving around coming onto your property to do assessments. So assessments are an important part of governance uh, throughout the province. They, the assessors come to your property and determine the value of the structures that are on your property to ensure that everybody is being taxed equitably across the county. The more accurate the assessed values are, the more equitable the entire assessment system becomes. Detailed information is collected through on-site inspections and also through uh, surveys of the individual landowners. So you can expect to see uh, the assessors at your property approximately every five years. You're going to see, right now they're driving a silver kind of hatchback uh, vehicle with the Cameras County logo on it. They'll be wearing a name tag that says Cameras County with their photo on it. Certainly if you're unsure of whether they're actually a representative of the Cameras County, anytime you see a Cameras County vehicle, if you're unsure, call the office and we can uh, in, uh, check in to make sure that it is a county employee that is on your property. Assessors generally call ahead to let you know that they're going to be on your property to arrange a day that they'll be there. So you should expect them to arrive at, uh, on a specific day. You've moved out to the county and now you're like, this is great, there's farmland next to me and I'm enjoying this idyllic place. And that's what we want from you is to enjoy being surrounded by farmland and to appreciate it. But there are sometimes some people go, I didn't sign up for this when they're seeding or harvesting at three in the morning uh, right next to your acreage. You can be assured that those operations are generally short lived, uh, but they are part of a normal operation of, of the running your farm. And if we get a complaint about those, or if a complaint comes to the province about those operations, provided they are following standard operating procedures for a farm, we are not going to uh, accept your complaint on those. So one of the things that uh, we like to tell people is, you know, if you are having a big special event on a specific day, and you know that the farmer is seeding or, or harvesting, Sometimes you can talk to that farmer and say, you know, my wedding's today. Can you do the back 40 before you come and do, do the, the property right next to me? And generally, good, they'll be good neighbors and try and help you out. But you can expect, especially in the spring and fall, to have operations right next to you, creating noise and dust and traffic and lights at all hours of the day and night on a short-term basis. So it's just something to prepare for. Speaking of good neighbors, one of the things that you often hear is uh, good fences make good neighbors, and that's true in the county as well as in an urban environment. There is a provincial uh, regulation called the Line Fence Act that regulates fences in the community. But one of the things we do like to highlight for our acreage owners, if, if you own livestock, so you have a horse or a couple of goats or something like that, you are responsible for that fencing. So even if your neighbor uh, has, would benefit from that fence because it's a, a delineation of the property, they're not responsible unless they also own livestock. So it's something to keep in mind that if you are keeping animals, it's your responsibility to fence them. If both neighbors have livestock, then you can split the costs on that fencing. Our final section today is talking about our protective services department. This is a really important uh, aspect of Cameras County and one that uh, is very visible because you're bound to see them at some point. Cameras County uh, Protective Services covers municipal enforcement, fire safety, emergency management, and health and safety. Health and safety is primarily an internal component of their uh, job, looking after the uh, staff for Cameras County, but they do do some external things, including pr playground safety. So if there's a playground that you're concerned about, uh, certainly contact Cameras County and we'll have our playground inspector come out and look at that. 
the staffing of that department, they have a manager who is also a peace officer and looks after the uh, emergency management component and is our uh, regional fire chief. And then there's three peace officers who work around the clock uh, in a variety of ways, primarily doing traffic enforcement. And then our health and safety officer and some administrative staff as well. And then the county manages three fire departments and as well as partnering with other uh, fire departments. You can see a list of the municipal enforcement authorities that the uh, municipal uh, or community peace officers look after. Traffic safety is probably the one that's most visible because they do patrol all of our county roads. And if you are going a little too fast, you might not just get a wave. Uh, so they will be out at all times doing that. They're also responsible for gaming and liquor animal protection, so if you have a stray dog or anything like that, they're responsible for those. Environmental protection, highway development, dangerous goods, stray animals, petty trespassing, uh, provincial offenses, and any county bylaws. So basically, your routine traffic and enforcement is gonna be by our peace officers. Otherwise, you're gonna be looking to the RCMP. We have a detachment out of Camrose and one out of Bashaw that service uh, Camrose County. So in an emergency, obviously, you're going to want to dial 911. Uh, but if it's a smaller issue, you can certainly contact the Cameras County office. The peace officer's number is 780-672-4449. Or you can email them. Um, after hours, they don't, they don't monitor that. Or they monitor that phone, but they won't answer it right away. So if it's an emergency, again, after hours, you definitely want to call 911. So animal control is, again, an aspect that the peace officers look after. We hire Old McDonald's Farm, which is a no-kill shelter, to capture any animals that we do find that are stray. So if you have a stray animal in your area, contact us. They also do routine patrols to uh, ensure that they're trying to capture anything that uh, is going uh, on in the community without having to notify them. But if you see a stray dog, certainly contact the county. So Camrose County is uh, very involved in proactive policing and patrols and visibility within Camrose County is a high priority. So we spend a lot of time out on the streets and making sure that people are aware of our activities. And then we're also engaged in different community groups and school programs to try and make sure that people are aware that we're there as, as a way to help reduce crime. Because if uh, people see peace officers in the area, they're less likely to commit an offense. Cameras County runs three different fire halls, uh, New Norway, Farintosh, and Round Hill. We're in the process of actually combining New Norway and Farintosh and Edberg's fire halls into one fire hall this uh, year in 2021. Um, but in addition to that, we also have uh, partnerships with a number of our urban centers who also have fire halls. So depending on your location, you would end up calling a different fire hall depending on where you're at. So if you're close to the city of Cameras, you're going to call the city of Cameras Fire Department. If you're near Hay Lakes, it's going to be Hay Lakes. If you're near Round Hill, it's going to be Round Hill. So it's not a bad idea for you to know which fire department um, is going to respond, especially if you have a non-emergency call. If you have an emergency call, obviously, again, 911. Um, Cameras County does require fire permits for uh, most fires between April and October. So if you're doing something outside of a, an approved fire pit or a barbecue or those kinds of things, you will need a fire permit from the county. You'll also need a fire permit if you're going to launch fireworks. So that would be another reason to call the Protective Services Department. If you're unsure, again, there's information on our website or give our office a call on uh, what you need to do. And also, anytime that uh, fire risk is very high, the county has the right to put on a fire ban, just like any other municipality. We typically get, advertise those on our website, on our radio, um, and on the signs as you drive into Camaros County. So there's lots of ways to find out about those. But if you think that it's windy or dry, chances are it's not a good day to light a fire. Emergency management is another aspect that uh, is a broader job for a number of employees at Camaros County. Uh, the Protective Services oversees that, but this is looking at things that are larger than your typical emergency. So a tornado or a major snow floor storm that knocks out power for a significant amount of time where a number of people are affected and we may need to bring in resources from other municipalities or from the private sector to help us with that. There's a plan in place for a number of different disasters. So we prepare 
and the county does drills at least once a year on how to manage different emergencies. So if one ever does happen in Camrose County, we have some knowledge and preparation amongst all of our staff on how to handle uh, an emergency and how to connect with other agencies that can support us in that emergency. One of the things that you can do if you live in Camrose County or anywhere else is have a 72-hour preparedness uh, kit. Um, especially if you're moving from a city to a rural environment, you should be prepared that an emergency response may take more time. Uh, if the power goes out, the focus is going to be on those communities with the most amount of people. So if you're in a more remote location, it may take longer for the power company to come and help you. It also can take more time to get a snow plow down the road, those kinds of things. So really recommend that you follow the Government of Canada's guide for 72-hour preparedness so that you can shelter in place in your home. The other thing to think about when you're doing that is if you have animals, especially larger animals, um, how are you going to feed and water them as well as your family? Usually you have enough pet food for your dog and cat, but sometimes you need to think about if the watering system is frozen outside, how are you going to handle that? We also encourage if there's a disaster, it's good to have in place the opportunity to move your livestock somewhere else if you need. So if you've got a couple of horses, do you have a trailer or a friend with a trailer that can help you relocate those animals and where will you relocate them to? So these are all things that the 72 hour preparedness guide can help walk you through and things that you should be considering in advance because it's easier to think about it now than it is when we're in an actual situation. And again, touching on the health and safety program, primarily that's to ensure that the people that work hard for you every day at Camrose County are uh, maintaining a, a safe work environment for each other. And uh, when we're dealing with the public or uh, dealing with equipment, that we're being safe in everything that we do. And then again, they also provide some additional information out to the public around uh, playgrounds and those kinds of things. So I just received a question from our audience that was a really good one and I want to make sure I covered it. And um, just as a reminder, I actually pulled this information off of our website so you could find it there too. But the question was, is there any restrictions on keeping horses on an acreage? And the answer to that is yes. There's some nuances to it, but generally speaking, if you are on a large lot country residential, the rule is that you can have one horse on two and a half acres. And if you have more than two and a half acres, you can have another horse for every two and a half acres of land that you have. If your property is zoned agricultural, which does occasionally happen with individual acreages surrounded by farmland, there's technically no restriction on the number of animals that you can keep on that property. However, if you have too many animals to properly maintain on that property, you're going to find us visiting with you uh, because of an animal com a complaint that you're not properly caring for those animals. So if you're on a large lot country residential acreage, uh, you can have one for every two and a half acres. If you're in a multi-lot subdivision where the acreages are relatively small, so under two and a half acres, then the answer to that would be no, you cannot keep horses. Uh, we also had a question from the audience about power poles. Power poles are not regulated by Camrose County, but it is a very important consideration if you're buying an acreage where there's no power poles already existing. One of the things that people are shocked by is the cost of bringing power any distance in the county. So if you have to bring power to your acreage, you are responsible for that bill and it can be very expensive. So the best thing to do is before you buy an acreage that does not have any power uh, adjacent, so if you can't see power lines because they would all be overhead, the best thing to do is before you buy that acreage would be to call the um, power provider and ensure that they can provide power to that location and get an estimate of what it's going to cost because both of those would factor in significantly on your ability to develop in Camrose County. We do have a few buildings that are off grid, but it's pretty rare that you would want to do that type of development. We certainly support it, but it would be something that you would want to factor in. Um, the other thing that we do consider in any new development is generally any new acreages we require power to be installed prior to subdivision. So thank you for taking your time to listen to me today. I hope that uh, you'll reach out to Cameras County if you have any questions. I've left you the uh, contact information for the general switchboard at Cameras County. So if you have any question, if you 
email county at county.cameras.ab.ca or call our main switchboard. The receptionist will direct you to the right person to answer your questions and we look forward to talking with you about that. And once again, the other way to reach out to us, especially in non-office hours, is to check out our website. We're constantly trying to add more information to that website and it's a very uh, good resource for any information that you might be looking for about moving to Cameras County, developing an acreage, or just general information uh, that might help you out. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.